Call to order the August 24th meeting of the Cary Town Council. And at this time, I'll call on our Mayor Pro Tem, Don France, to do the ceremonial opening. Mr. Thank you, Mayor. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is to <coughs> adopt the agenda. Is there a motion to do so? So move. There's a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We now move to our first uh, reports, recognitions, and presentations. And our first recognition report presentation is one of my favorite times of the year. It's when we get to bring up the town crier, who is also the crier for our sister city in Markham, Canada. And at this time, I'll ask town crier John Webster to come forward. And by the way, he's joined with his beautiful wife, Mary. <laughs>
It's important, of course, with uh, sister cities and the importance of the two communities getting together. And, and as we mentioned, I've been coming down here for quite a while, and I feel that this is home. And uh, thank you to all of you for making us both feel welcome. I have here, it's from Mayor Frank Scarpetti and members of his council on and extending congratulations to the town of Cary as you celebrate the 47th anniversary of Lazy Days Arts and Crafts Festival. We appreciate your efforts to promote arts and crafts and to provide an opportunity for members of the community to get together and enjoy the works of local artists through this annual signature festival. We also look forward to a continued friendship and continued nourishment of our long-standing sister city relationship. Best wishes for a successful event. It's signed and sealed August 26th and 27th by His Worship, Mayor Frank Scarpetti. <laughs> so I present that to you on behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. I love it. Well, the mayor's coming back. Uh, just a reminder that uh, uh, John and Mary will be at our opening ceremonies, and we hope that you all come out. Um, this will be the 20th year that um, he will be opening as our town crier. Formerly, he came, and when we realized after the first uh, one that he did, that for him to be able to compete in the United States, uh, we had to adopt him. And we're so proud of his uh, participation in all those uh, contests. And I forgot the name of the most recent one, but uh, uh, was Ontario. just- Ontario. Was it the Ontario one? The, the Ontario Guild of Town Crier. Thank you uh, that for reminding me. I'm getting up there, John, sorry. you know and. Mm -hmm. Um, so congratulations, uh, one as outstanding crier. Let's give him a hand for that one more time. Thank you, Jack. And again, thank you, John and Mary Webster, for being here. So now I'll turn it over to our town manager, Sean Stiegel, to see if he can top that. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to that. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have two updates regarding last week's meetings of the North Carolina Legislature. First, the General Assembly passed House Bill 488, which further restricts the ability of municipalities to ensure quality development that reflects the value of their communities. Among the new provisions, which the General Assembly leadership has called an effort to help reduce the cost of regulation on developers, cities, and towns, uh, they are now prohibited from requiring routine exterior sheathing inspections, except in regions where the ultimate wind speeds exceed 140 miles per hour, which is basically nowhere. Uh, <laughs> we can also no longer require pavement design standards for private driveways and parking lots that are more stringent than the standards set by North Carolina Department of Transportation. And as you can imagine, our standards have always been higher um, than NCDOTs, but not any longer. There are also several environmentally focused provisions in the new law one of which reduces the amount of money developers have to set aside to maintain or repair stormwater devices from 15% to 10% of construction costs. My second update is about the action that the legislator did not take, at least so far. As the council is aware, we've been setting accessory dwelling units for some time when we learned that the General Assembly was looking at statewide legislation that would affect what we do in Cary. Well, since no action has been taken, and given how late we are in the session of this legislature, we believe that momentum on this topic has stalled at least for this year. Uh, so after conferring and hearing from council members, I've asked staff to move forward with getting citizen feedback on options that we've developed so far so we can resume our efforts. And Lisa, I didn't know if you had anything you wanted to add there? No, great summary. Oh, thank you. Uh, great addition. Before I close, I want to thank Lisa, Assistant Town Manager Shelley Curran, and Kerry's legislative delegation, who have worked hard in the General Assembly to try to get the best outcomes for us and our citizen. uh, citizens. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Stiegel. We now move to our next item, which is Public Speaks Out. We've included instructions for speaking at this forum on the online and printed agendas. There were three opportunities to participate in Public Speaks Out through written comments, calling in or attending here in person this evening. 
If you are here in person and would like to speak, I would ask that you take a seat in the rows to my right that are reserved for speakers. Public speaks out speakers have three minutes each for their comments, and speakers may speak on any item as long or any topic as long as it's not a public hearing, and that's to your benefit because you get more time at a public hearing. The three minute time limit will be enforced to be fair to all of our speakers, not to be rude. So there's a timer on the podium. It'll start off with a green light. And when it turns yellow, that means you have 30 seconds remaining. And when it flashes red, that's the point I'll interrupt you. Again, not trying to be rude, but trying to be fair to all of our speakers. And that will be the time you need to conclude your comments. I thank everyone in the audience for understanding that this is a business meeting. Please do not applaud, make remarks from your seats, or anything else that may distract from this meeting. So now is the time for Public Speaks Out. And first, I'll check with the clerk to, to read any written comments and call on any registered speakers. We had three written comments and no registered speakers. Justin Cody wrote in with concerns about the Militon Avenue extension and fear of how tr additional traffic will affect their neighborhood. Mary Collins submitted written comments about town hall development, RFQ, and questioned different aspects of what she's been told and what she has heard. Other topics included One Wake's website related to town hall development, um, exceeded budget project budget of the downtown park, the mayor's blog post, and Curie community plan. She requested the mayor and council members to embrace the citizens' request to revisit and modify the Curie community plan. We had one anonymous um, writer who submitted comments about the management of the town related to affordable housing and how recent development is driving out people who have lived here their whole lives. And Thank no you. registered speakers. No registered speakers. If you are here and would like to speak at Public Speaks Out and you have not registered, now's the time to come forward. Anyone to speak at Public Speaks Out, and we do have public hearings coming up, but this is Public Speaks Out. Anyone to speak on any topic that's not a public hearing? I get you to move to your left, please. The other microphone on your left. Oh, the, Thank you. It's my first opportunity. Oh, you're fine. My name is David Christensen. I represent uh, Cary American Legion Post 67. I want to make an announcement uh, of something that happened to for our post that we're very grateful that it happened. Uh, the <coughs> National Rifle Association. Uh, we applied for a grant, and they have honored that application with a grant of, of equipment for the Cary High School Junior ROTC shooting uh, team that we sponsor in our junior shooting rifle. Uh, or uh, this val the value of this equipment is $3,100. Uh, these are state-of-the-art Crossman air rifles, and they will help these cadets uh, compete at a level uh, beyond which they've been able to do so far with legacy equipment. And we're so grateful for the NRA for uh, helping us with this. And these these weapons are stored at the uh, American Legion Post 67, and the uh, cadets uh, practice with their uh, equipment there. And uh, we're very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. Anyone else to speak at Public Speaks Out? Good evening, my name is Renee Miller and I'm a Cary resident. Downtown is now a happening place and the only problem is getting there. If you ask most of the citizens out where I live, the parking problem downtown is indeed one reason that many citizens don't go. 
They, and the seemingly endless construction projects cause, cause congestion and frustration. Take transit, you might suggest. It's free, it's easy, and you can load your bike on the bus. That's all great if you want to stick to transit routes and schedules that end by 10 p.m., even on the weekends. Just last week, the Kerry Report spent a quite a long article attempting to refute the problem of nowhere to park. And I agree, there are places, but they're not exactly convenient to the happening places downtown. In answer to this, the town has gone to the expense of purchasing a trolley to ferry people back and forth to the town hall parking deck. Through many different media, we are promoting the use of our fledgling bus system. If you are going out with your friends to enjoy Carrie's new nightlife, you better plan ahead because you need to head home with the last bus. And the bars and breweries are often open well after 11 p.m. I think it's great that we're spending time thinking about how people can come and enjoy the new amenities and patronize the businesses downtown. But I believe we have yet to be firing on all cylinders. What's missing is the promotion of private ride sharing. There are downtown businesses that operate primarily during the day. We could possibly approach some of them to see if we could offer safe, lighted rideshare stops in their parking lots for Uber, Lyft, or even taxi service. It seems to me that establishing something along the lines of the swap spots right behind our own town hall, but in a location that's more convenient to Chatham Street, might provide an additional opportunity for getting to and from downtown. Establishing such a stop would also help minimize traffic congestion due to pickups in the middle of a city block. It would also be safer for riders getting in and out of rideshare vehicles. I urge the town to take a look at this as one more transportation opportunity for our community that would help more people enjoy our downtown on a more flexible schedule, would cost the taxpayers little, and would help support some hardworking drivers. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else to speak at Public Speaks Out? Seeing no one will close Public Speaks Out and we'll move to the <coughs> consent agenda. This is item four if you're following along. For the benefit of people watching our meeting on TV, I'm going to take a moment to review the one consent agenda item. <laughs> please, one. please know that one vote approves this item. <laughs> On the consent agenda, we have a call for public hearing for 21A12 Westford WEHLP Properties, Veritas at Green Level Destination Center. Would any of council members like this item pulled for discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> like, why not? So moved. There's a motion. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. second? And a second. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We now move to public hearings, which is item number five. Same rules apply for public hearings that apply for public speaks out, with one exception. Speakers now have five minutes each for their comments. Our first public hearing is item is rezoning 22 REZ 18 Trinity Road townhouses. Principal planning, Aaron, principal planner, Aaron Puckett will introduce this item to council. Council will not take action this evening, and instead, it's going to be referred to our planning and zoning board for their review and recommendation, and it will return to council in a few months for our vote at that time. Ms. Puckett. Thank you, and good evening, council. This is a request to rezone approximately 2.85 acres located between Trinity Road and Old Trinity Circle. The subject property is an assemblage of two parcels that are currently vacant. It is surrounded by residential lots of varying size as well as a number of vacant properties. For context, this site is located about 0.3 miles north of Chapel Hill Road and just west of I-40 and the Cary Raleigh border. Wake Med Soccer Park is also just to the south of the site. This is a view of Trinity Road looking north with the subject property on the right. There are power lines along all three road frontages of the site. 
Per the LDO, utility lines are required to be installed underground, except in situations where such placement is prohibited or impractical. Detailed plans for utility installation will be prepared during development plan review. However, due to the short amount of road frontage, it is likely the lines may remain above ground. According to Carey's GIS, there is a possible stream buffer impacting a small portion of the southeast corner of the site. Field determination of such features is required at time of development plan review. Trinity Road is currently a two-lane road along the site frontage and is designated as a three-lane thoroughfare on the future roadway widths map, with street side trail on the west side and sidewalk on the east. This site would be subject to dedication of right-of-way and construction of improvements for this site's half of the ultimate cross-section along its frontage. A traffic study was not required for the number of dwellings that would be permitted under the proposed rezoning. According to the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Master Plan, there is a future street side trail planned for the west side of Trinity Road, opposite this site. A portion of the trail is existing south of the site. The site is currently split zoned with a portion in Residential 12, or R12, and the remainder in Transitional Residential, or TR. And the applicant proposes to rezone the site to Transitional Residential conditional use. The applicant has offered one zoning condition to limit uses to detached dwellings, townhouses, and associated accessory uses. This would allow the site to be developed either entirely as one of these housing types or a mixed residential development with both. At the allowed density in transitional residential zoning at six units per acre, the site could potentially develop with up to 17 dwellings. In addition to the condition to limit uses on the site, development of the assemblage will be held to additional requirements of the LDO, including a 50-foot type A streetscape along the Trinity Road frontage, Note also that local streets do not require a streetscape for residential uses. A 40-foot Type A buffer along the southern property line if the site is developed with any townhouses. If developed solely as detached dwellings, a 30-foot Type B buffer represented by the dashed line would apply. Within these buffers, there are limitations on disturbance, typically limited to areas needed for road improvements, pedestrian networks, and utility crossings. The site would also be required to provide at least 600 square feet of community gathering space and would follow LDO requirements to prioritize preservation of any champion trees identified at time of development plan review or replacement of caliper inches of those trees if preservation is infeasible. The LDO requirements are townhouses and as noted previously, the applicant has not offered conditions related to architecture. A preliminary analysis against the Cary Community Plan finds the policies in the live, work, and shape chapters apply most directly. The proposal would provide additional housing choice in the area as the townhouses or smaller lot detached dwellings that could be developed under this proposal are somewhat unique in the immediate area. The applicant has not specified in their zoning conditions which of these housing types would be developed on site. Provision of these smaller housing types can also help support Cary's existing and future workforce, and this location is also proximate to downtown Cary and the I-40 interchange. The proposed uses would provide an appropriate use transition to the variety of residential lot sizes and zoning districts that surround the site. The future growth framework map designates the site as being within a heritage neighborhood. These areas encourage the widest variety of housing types and lot sizes, and transitional residential is identified as an appropriate zoning district. A virtual neighborhood meeting was held in May, and 22 citizens participated. They had questions and comments regarding traffic, future improvements of Trinity Road, the proposed price point of the homes, stormwater mitigation, and general questions about the rezoning process. Staff received three emails and three 311 inquiries since the neighborhood meeting. We actually received two additional comments this afternoon after this slide was finalized, which is why those numbers don't match. Um, one email cited traffic concerns. The other inquiries were seeking details about this case and the rezoning process. 
and two additional messages received today voiced opposition to the request. Staff mailed public hearing notification to property owners within 800 feet of the subject site, which exceeds the state's and carries LDO requirements. This concludes my presentation. The applicant's representative is here to provide comments, and following the public hearing, I'm available for your questions. Thank you, Ms. Puckett. At Thank this you. time, I would invite the applicant's representative forward. get you to move to the left thank you good evening Am I supposed to? Um, thanks for having us this evening and thank you for your time I just want to keep this short and answer any questions you might have um, we've spoken with neighbors we met on site to anybody that's asked us to have a conversation with them and to talk about stormwater and other mitigation things one of the largest things that came about was probably in comments were about Trinity Road, which based on you know the ownership of that road, it's a different conversation with a different organization. So um, here for your question. So we do our questions after the public hearing. So stay okay. close by. We, we might ask questions then or we might not. Gotcha. Um, but we'll hold the public hearing. If we have questions for you, we'll, we'll ask you up at that time. Okay. Unless you have additional comments you'd like to make. I would like to point out that Trinity Road is a state road, and so Kerry has some say in what can happen, but dealing with DOT is a whole other ball of wax. Um, just keep that in mind. Sorry about that. Uh, the only thing I would add is we talked through extensively stormwater with the neighbors that had concerns. It was mainly uh, Robert Parker, who was on the south side of the property, and we walked through that. His property is actually higher elevation than ours so his runoff would actually come and does um, other neighbors that were concerned about price point look and design we showed them examples of things we've built in um, in other areas of the triangle for them to feel comfortable of what we could do and we you know, are open to doing additional zoning conditions for that so okay thank you, thank you. so now is the time for the public hearing for 22 REZ 18 Trinity Road townhomes and I'm going to call on our clerk to read any written comments and to call on any registered speakers we had seven written comments and one registered speaker um, I'll read those written comments um, or summarize them Ken Edwards submitted written comments and will also speak to summarize his comments Kara Emmons shared she would like the property to remain residential with no townhomes as there's already enough traffic and speeding issues on Trinity Road. James Bryce pointed out there has been no traffic studies on Trinity Road to any of the recent development, and he shared how it's impossible to get out onto Trinity Road in the mornings and evenings. David Scholl requested council preserve the current zoning of certain parcels that run along their property line. He shared this site is not a logical place for high density growth. Mark. Um, Bowerman shared um, his support for the application. Karen Smith requested the town not approve the rezoning request, and if approved, they requested the town put strict perimeters around new development to respect the character of the existing neighborhood. Stacy um, Scheffler requested council hold developers to the promises they made in their final development plans. She requested the main entrance drive on Deerwood Place not be directly opposite her driveway. And we, one registered speaker was Ken Edwards. And I would invite Mr. Edwards forward at this time. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Town Manager, Town Attorney, Council Member. My name is Ken Edwards. I live at 6234 Deerwood Place, and the uh, property in question is directly, diagonally from my home. And I've come to speak tonight because in, we have had a development. Uh, sorry. Okay. We've had a development 
in the recent years, within the last five years, called uh, Haysbury Towns. It's on the other side of the neighborhood. And it's a high density townhome type development. And in those last three years, we've had major, major traffic accidents between Deerwood and King Lawrence uh, on Trinity Road. And I truly believe that is because of the high density of the neighborhood now with those new townhomes and the fact that there is very little egress from the neighborhood. There's Vera, which is right at uh, Highway 54 or Chapel Hill Road. There's a smaller road called Cooper, but hardly anyone uses it. And most everybody, including those in the town's development, use Deerwood to get out of the neighborhood. And that is directly related to the number of accidents that we've had, major accidents. In fact, last year we had an accident so bad it took out the telephone pole and we lost power for quite a while. It is a dangerous intersection. There's trees to the right when you come out of the neighborhood and it is almost impossible to see when, it, when there is uh, high traffic in the mornings or in the evenings. It's almost impossible to get into or out of the neighborhood without uh, putting yourself at risk. So putting 5, 10, 17 new neighbors will push us over the brink of what is safe for people who live in that neighborhood. So I urge you, urge you very diligently to take a look at a traffic study to make sure that the citizens of Cary and those on the outlying areas are safe and do not themselves become a victim of a traffic accident because we've pushed this development in and made the density so great that you've now become a dangerous situation. That's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If you are here and are not a registered speaker and would like to speak at this rezoning proposal, now's the time to come forward and I would invite the first speaker forward. And if you would like to speak after this speaker to expedite our time, I'd ask that you stand in the stairway to my right. You can come straight on down though. <laughs> You're our next speaker. We want you to get down as quick as possible. Hello, council members. Uh, my name is Dale Holloway. I'm a resident of 108 Trinity Woods Drive. I also have a second home, 206 Trinity Woods Drive, both are which in the effective areas of this uh, proposed development. Uh, my wife and I, I would like to oppose this uh, development for a number of reasons. I've also provided the council with uh, the written feedback, and I've also sent it through email through 311. Uh, our first opposition is to the infrastructure stage. So over the last few years, we've had a number of new neighborhoods that included Trinity Grove, Brandywine, and the homes along Trinity Road. Our neighborhoods, as well as Medfield, suffer from constant brown outages every time that there's a storm, and along with the recent power outages. As Mr. Edwards previously stated, we also had a severe power outage with the accident that knocked out power through the whole neighborhood and blocked the street on Trinity Woods completely for hours. Uh, in addition to that infrastructure strain, we also oppose the traffic conjunction, as, as previously mentioned. So not having a traffic study, I understand that there's only 17 townhomes that are pr currently proposed. But what, what was left out is they're proposing 72 parking spaces for 17 townhomes, which we believe is not realistic with that neighborhood and is going to add significant strain, even if it's a two-car garage with additional two spaces, given the 17 townhomes, that's a significantly number of 68 additional cars added to that road. As previously stated by Mr. Edwards, there is significant trouble getting in and out of that neighborhood. As you're aware, SAS is just 2.5 miles down the road from there. So all the traffic going to SAS 
comes down Trinity Road onto that area, which makes that area difficult to get out and in in the mornings and the evenings. In addition, you may have already heard that there's a recent PNC expansion, which is going to also add additional strain to Trinity Road. Uh, what, as you saw listed on the previous survey, that, that is a two-lane road. There are no sidewalks, there is no turning lane, and there are no stop signs in that area. And if you check traffic, there has been numerous cops that sit there catching speeders on a frequent basis. So adding additional cars is just going to add to our existing problems in our neighborhood. In addition, they mentioned stormwater. They only mentioned the homes that are on the Deerwood side. But what was not mentioned is that stream goes along the residents of Trinity Woods. There is that stream, given that they are uphill from us. All of that water is going to go downhill across Mr. Edwards' yard, down into our backyard that runs across all the way from 100 all the way across Trinity Woods Drive. There are a number of houses back there that also have a stream that runs through it. So all that water from those new houses, if you clear cut those trees, all that water is going to run through the back of our neighborhoods. Right? We're also concerned about the zoning precedence. If we add density here, where in addition in this area are we going to add a future density? As previously stated, Trinity Road cannot handle additional density, right? We also think about the community cohesion. Adding 17 townhomes where there are nice single family homes does not meet with the aesthetic of the previous homes. If you want to, you know, consider four, maybe five homes, single family homes, that might be okay. 17 homes, townhomes with 72 cars is a bit uh, too much for us to consider. Therefore, we are proposing this rezoning effort. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else to speak at this rezoning request? Anyone at all? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and I'll try to address some of the things I wrote down. And yes. We have one more. Oh, please. I am so sorry. Public hearing not closed. Looking at the attorney. I'm good. All right. <laughs> Come on up. Sorry about that. My name is Kathy Souls, and I'm at um, 104 Trinity Woods. Been there since 1999. I've been in Cary since 85. And I would just like to reiterate what he had spoke about. The traffic <laughs> is just, since I've been there since 99 till now, between NC State, the fairgrounds, SAS, the um, soccer park, everybody knows that you can cut through there. You add that much on there. I mean, the kids already, my kids used to be able to <laughs> drive, ride their bike across, you know, they are now. I mean, you, can't, you have to sit there, you can't get out. I just want irrit you know, to reiterate that, that you can't get out already. The traffic is just amazing. Um, and adding that onto it, I just think it's just going to be more of a nightmare, you know. Um, and also the water situation, the runoff. When they did the last new development, we already have so much water. I'm at 104 there, so it comes across 101, 102, 104. We've got a river. There's a creek there, but now the river is coming all through our backyard. Every time it rains, we've got the whole backyards are all full of water. That was not like that when they did the last new development. You put this new in, they've got to do something if this goes in for the water situation because it's just, it is a mess there. So I just want to re reiterate all of what he said. I am in agreement that a few houses is one thing, but you put all those townhouses in there and that all that parking, two, three people in each, each of those, that's a lot of traffic. So I do oppose it. Thank you. Anyone else for this public hearing? I see no one. I've got one good eye. <laughs> see no one. I'll close this public hearing. And I'm going to try to address some of the things I heard. And Ms. Puckett, you may or may not be able to help me. Uh, traffic study. So this is an NCDOT road. The ultimate build out is three lanes. Three lanes. And I don't know if this is on the tip. I don't think it is. 
kind of looking with one eye. Not on the tip. And what that means is there's a traffic improvement plan by the state to widen and fix roads. If it's not on the tip, that means it's at least 10 years out. Even though they update every couple of years, um, they're broke. So if it's not on 10-year plan, it's probably 15 years out. So that is an issue. What I would like to know before we see it again is the intersections that were mentioned. Maybe there's criteria there for a traffic signal or something because that does sound dangerous. Don't know if the criteria are met or not, uh, but that's something we definitely need to look at and see if we can get information on if we got that. I don't believe that takes a traffic study to get that we might already have information. Yeah, okay, good. So, um, and then the, the other thing I wanted to ask was about the parking spaces. Um, I know we've been adjusting parking spaces for these types of developments, proposals, and so can you speak to the range that we allow? or a combo. Um, if detached alone, it would be two spaces per unit, and those are typically provided in a driveway or garage or a combination of the two. The townhomes is what's going to have the higher parking requirement. Um, so it's two per dwelling unit, an additional half space for bedroom above that, and a quarter space per unit for visitor parking. I did do some quick calculations because I'm, I'm not certain where the number that was cited came from. If these were all, for example, three bedroom townhomes, 17 units would require 47 parking spaces. Um, if they were all four bedroom, if they're bigger, uh, more expensive townhouses, they would require 56 spaces. So, um, so it sounds like there is plans for adequate parking. Uh, we would hold it to those requirements of the LDO, yes. Okay. Um, let's see, stormwater runoff. I'm not sure what the last development they were speaking of, but I'm guessing we had a five-year storm or 10-year storm retention for that, and it's now 100? Yes, now it's 100. So it's 10 times more than that neighborhood was. So I know you don't trust us, but believe me, that will catch whatever comes off of that property. So I think that's something you can talk to Ms. Puckett about, and she could help you with details about that. And that's only been within the last couple of years. Uh, power outages, we have a liaison with Duke Energy. I would love to get you answers with that. So can we connect those who spoke about power outages with Marty Clayton or someone else at Duke Energy and find that. out the reason these are happening frequently and maybe they can get answers and get that addressed? Let's see, I answered that. And then there's, uh, there was a statement, I want to make sure that people understand that this is not a town proposal. It is the property owner's proposal and that we evaluate those based on the Cary Community Plan to see if it matches what was intended earlier in the staff report that Ms. Puckett did. She talked about the live, work, and shape chapters, and there are several chapters to that plan. It's our job to decide if it meets the, or if it's part of that plan or not. And then the Planning and Zoning Board, which this will go to next, will also give us their recommendation on how it fits with the plan. Um, so we are not able to say you cannot develop. That is not an option. We don't have that authority, and nor should we. Uh, if a person wants to develop their property, they absolutely have that right. Someone talked about high density, or a couple of people talked about high density and, and we can very much or very easily turn this down. It depends on how, it, how the council shakes out whenever we vote on this, which is several months away. But I would caution you to know that this region's gonna double in population in the next 30 years. So if it's turned down, they have to wait a year, the next pr proposal will probably be more dense than this one. Um, just something to keep in mind. And the reason I tell you that, because it's in everybody's best interest to work together, to see if you can come up with something that everybody can agree with. If not, that's understandable. At least you tried. And that's what I'm encouraging everyone to do. The developers or the representatives already talked with, said they talk with residents. I would encourage you to keep doing that. That's very important. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that future density in Cary is going to be more dense than we're seeing today. In fact, 
90% of what we're seeing coming to town hall is all multifamily, am I correct? You're not talking about the town hall site. You're talking about <laughs> oh, yeah. <the> application. <laughs> I'm talking about what, what comes in as proposals. <laughs> Just yes. bad enough confusion. Yeah, really. <laughs> right. yes, Thank you for yes. clarifying yes. that. Yes. Um, so, uh, yes, so it's, it's very believable and very high probability that future proposals that come in, if this is turned down, will be a lot higher density than what this is. Not saying that we're going to improve this or not, just letting you know what I think. And those are the things I wrote down. I'm eager to hear what my colleagues have to say about what they heard as well. You want to go first, Don, since okay. it's your district? Um, question for clarification first. Um, given that half the property is zoned TR and the other half is zoned R12, how many units could be built by right today? That's an excellent question. So with that half and half zoning and no conditions on the property currently, someone could build up to five units by right on the R12 piece and up to seven on the TR piece, so 12 total. This is five more than so would be okay. allowed by right today. Okay, so we're talking basically about an extra five homes, but a little bit of a different character going from predominantly single family to total townhomes. Okay. And, and that's a good point that should be emphasized. In other words, they could walk out of here today and get a permit mm -hmm. and build. And build the minimum standards. And we have nothing to do with that. Minimum standards. Yeah. That, that's the concern I have on this, besides the traffic. But the reality is that's a pre-existing problem. You know, I, I don't know that 12, 14, 17 townhomes make or break Trinity Road. The, the road's already broken. You know, so I can appreciate the concern, and, and I would love to, for us to see what we can do out there, possibly a traffic signal idea or whatever. But I heard the applicant talk about that, you know, his comment was, I showed the residents designs of things that we have done elsewhere. Um, and then I heard some other, uh, one of the speakers talked about wanting strict parameters. But there's no conditions in this application whatsoever that speaks to whatever designs were showed to the residents or the resident's expectation of high standards, nothing. So even, like you said, they could build 12 homes today by right, meet minimum standards. If this is approved without any other conditions, they can build 17 homes meeting minimum standards. And that's the concern I have. I mean, I drive through here all the time, you know, unfortunately go into the fairgrounds or some of these, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> It's a beautiful neighborhood, a lot of character. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm concerned that what gets put here doesn't fit with that. And if I had some conditions that at least spoke to that and gave us some assurances, I'd maybe be a little bit more at ease with it. So that's, that's my concern at that point. I'm sure other people have others, but that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I had the same impression. I was reading the comments from the um, citizen meeting and in the citizen meeting um, it you know the photographs were provided that's in the minutes there um, it's they're described as by Ryan as high-end townhome housing likely to sell for plus or minus a million dollars and then there are comments towards the end that citizens said um, one of them quote Thrilled to see the caliber of the proposed development. And another one said, pleased with the type of development being proposed. The challenge is, is that we don't have any right. conditions that tell right. us what's going to happen. And so, unfortunately, for the applicant, we have been burned. A lot. Really, really badly. A lot. Where yeah. we thought we were getting something absolutely amazing, and we got cardboard houses put up. And it is literally the bane of my existence. So because of that, you guys, you residents should at this point plan for cardboard houses because there's nothing in here that any kind of condition that guarantees you that it's going to be high-end homes. And that is up to the applicant to choose whether or not he's going to put those conditions there. Because the applicant can always sell the property. The zoning goes with yep. the land and not with the applicant. The second thing that I have to say touches a little bit on what you just said, Don, and that's about transition. In here, we say that it complies with the Cary Community Plan and that it, provi it provides a transition. But if you look at the site, to me, a transition, for this would be completely appropriate, let's say, if everything to the south of this site was office development. 
and you were using townhomes to transition from single family to office. But what you have here is a, is a piece of land that's bordered on all sides basically by residential. Large lot. Yeah, I mean, to me, the only appropriate thing for this lot is lots that are commiserate with what surrounds it. TRCU and R12 looks just right to me. And, you know, Mayor, I agree, you know, people keep coming in. The longer the time goes, people propose more and more dense. But we also have the ability to deny over and over and over again. And so I just wouldn't feel comfortable putting townhomes on this site with the conditions that we have today. I may never feel comfortable putting townhomes on this site just because these, this is a very nice community. And the, the houses that were built under that TRCU condition there along Trinity, they're awesome. I mean, I'd buy one any day of the week. So I don't think they're, you know, I don't think they're necessarily a minimum. You know, I think they're pretty nice. So I think if this land were to develop in, in the way that it's presently zoned, I think the neighborhood would be pretty happy with it. Other comments? I just have two. Um, the first one is, can we ensure that uh, traffic engineering and uh, the police go and check out the line of sight, the sight lines there, just to ask, I mean, if there have been, or not if, there's been these major accidents, <coughs> the state road, there's gotta be something that we can do to help these residents. So, seeing head shaking. The second one is, I don't think I've ever seen, and I think this is what you guys are also both talking about, a use that says detached dwellings, townhouses, and accessory units, but with no plan. Like, we not normally see a picture and say, oh, we're gonna put townhomes over here, and we're gonna put houses here, or there's gonna be so many, there's gonna be 15 townhomes and three, you know, three single family homes. I've never just seen one where it's just thrown. This is what we want to do. So just from a feedback to the applicant, um, we would like to see obviously more information about what you ex expect to do, what what you've talked with the neighbors about. Um, I am, I don't know where the, and I don't know if this is a site plan thing, but where is the actual access going to be to address the one citizen's complaint and concern? Where is that access going to be? Def it sounds like definitely not on Trinity Road, which means it's on Deerwood, which also means it's got to be at the right place. So there's so much work that still has to be done from between this public hearing and when we potentially see it again. I hope that they take the rest of my council colleagues' words and, and move forward on some of these ideas. Other comments? I, I, had, I just wanted to agree. You know, I've learned from these very, very knowledgeable folks here that if it's not in the conditions, it's not a thing. So when I read, you know, the ones, particularly the ones that were emailed in and I see verbally promised things, I think what I'd like to see is conditions saying the same thing so that everybody kind of knows what's gonna happen. But I have a question um, to clarify. I figure I've been trying to learn things, but you know, maybe others don't know this as well. When it comes to traffic studies, and I, I repeatedly hear people say they'd like a traffic study or there, there wasn't one required sometimes, sometimes there was. When we develop areas piecemeal, so it's not, you know, it becomes an aggregate, becomes a more highly developed area where, you know, think, but things are done like this, 17 here, you know, 10 there. At, do we ever hit a threshold with say recent history of development where we do need some kind of traffic study? For better or worse, the LDO requirement is based on the individual proposal. So as long as they're under that 100 peak hour trips, even if something was developed two years prior with 50 peak hour trips, it, it wouldn't be required for this. So is the expectation that virtually all Town of Cary roads and NCDOT roads can always handle an additional influx of less than 100 per day or per hour, whatever the measurement is? No. <laughs> that's yeah, such a great I think question. It's a, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. and I, I'm, if I'm wondering that, I think probably other people do as well. And I do yeah. hear about, you know, the traffic, traffic. I hear, I live downtown. <laughs> I, I can't walk my dog without hearing about traffic. So I just thought I'd, I'd go ahead and ask the question and make sure that we're all clear, including me, who's still learning some things here. Well, and, and I'm sure some of you all remember, we did at one point, think about an LDO amendment that would add up the neighborhoods as they came in and as they got to 100. Um, it's 
it's hard to write an ordinance amendment that fits the situation you want so we didn't pursue that at the time but it's always something we can continue to think about and it is also an equity issue of fairness yeah. you know yeah. you get mm -hmm. the first 80 trips come sure. in they don't have to do anything and the <laughs> next guy comes in and he got 25 and he bumps the threshold now he's the one that has to yeah. make all the improvements exactly and and now we've gotten to the point where we don't have large tracts of land right. to be developed so it's going to be a lot more of this piecemeal development and infill development so it, it just seems to me like I, I, I hear them I, and I drive over there sometimes myself um, so I, I, I do get it uh, but I just wanted to understand too how the traffic study parameters you know when does it kick in and maybe that is something that we as a body should consider I'd like to add just I, I know the council was aware but for the viewing audience um, we have in-house traffic engineers mm -hmm. which is very rare and um, they're ex they really are experts. And so their, their full-time job is just to study traffic patterns and improvements all day long and carry. So um, even though they have this process by which new development can happen, they're always looking holistically at what's going on with traffic and carry. And so um, I just didn't want to leave that unanswered for people to think, you know, we're not paying attention <coughs> to traffic and transportation. And it's something carry has been particularly adept at for quite some time. And the frustrating part for us is just as we heard again at the beginning of this meeting, the state is making it more and more difficult for us to, and taking away municipal authority again. So they keep making it easier for people to build, mm -hmm. but then they don't have any money on the state roads to fix the roads for the <laughs> stuff that came in that they required us to allow them to build. So help us with that next year at the ballot box, please. <laughs> any other comments? Okay, I, I want to thank those who spoke. Um, your comments are really valuable. This isn't your last time to provide comments. Uh, even if you're watching this on TV or streaming, you can provide comments to us at any time. You can come to speak at any council meeting between now and the time. Well, you can come to speak at it any time, even after we make a decision. Uh, you're always invited to come to a council meeting and speak on any topic that you would like. Uh, and I would encourage you to do so. Uh, I think the applicants heard some good feedback tonight. Uh, I think one of the things I heard from the council, if you have intentions, you might want to put, consider putting those as conditions. Um, otherwise, uh, this council usually looks at the worst case scenario, so they'll be thinking of it that way. And for the citizens, please work with the applicant and see if you can get something that would be meaningful and acceptable to you. Uh, and then in the end, if it's not, we can, we can vote against it. And that has happened. Uh, we're just at the beginning of the process. So in a month or two, this will go to the Planning and Zoning Board. That's a board of citizens that we appointed to give a citizen's perspective of how it meets the Cary Community Plan or not. And they're going to review it and make a recommendation to the council. And the council will probably see it in three or four months. And I'm just throwing ballpark guesses out there how long this will be. And that's when we're probably going to vote on it. In the meantime, if you have detailed questions or you need to be updated, Erin Puckett is your gal. She knows everything there is to know about this. She's the liaison, and she can give you any information that you need about this. So any other comments from council? All right. Thank you, Ms. Puckett. Thank you. We now move to our second public hearing, 22A09, Lovano Carey Annexation Principal Planner, Aaron Puckett, once again, will introduce this hearing. Council may take action on this item. Ms. Puckett. Thank you again, Mayor. The owners of 1901 Piney Plains Road have petitioned for annexation of 24.563 acres, so the parcel may be connected to carry utilities to facilitate construction of a mixed-use building containing up to 280 multifamily units and just over 5,000 square feet of office space. The total annexation area is 24.774 acres, which includes 0.211 acres of intervening right-of-way, which is adjacent to the site. And as you see here, a small sliver of the parcel is located across Piney Plains from the majority of the site and is included in the annexation request. The area is contiguous to Cary's corporate limits and is within the ETJ. 
The property is zoned Plan Development District Major and is within the Dellinger PDD, which was amended with rezoning case 19REZ17, approved in 2021. The Associated Development Plan 22DP5630 is currently under review and based on the provisions of the LDO can be approved administratively applicable LDO requirements. In accordance with the ordinance, the property must be annexed before the development plan can be approved. Following tonight's public hearing, I'm available for questions and council may take action on the request. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Puckett. Now is the time for the public hearing for 22A09. And I'm gonna call on our clerk to once again read any written comments and call on any registered speakers. No written comments and no registered speakers. If you're in the audience and you'd like to speak on at this public hearing, 22A09, Lovano, Cary Annexation, now's the time to come forward. Anyone to speak at this public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing, open it up to council members for questions, comments, or motion. Make a motion to approve annexation 22A09. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion. The only thing I would add if you're watching this, the rezoning has already been approved, so the type of use has been determined. All they're needing now is to be a part of Cary so they can get water and sewer. So that's basically what this decision is. We already decided what could go there. That, that was a long process. And it was. It was <laughs> painful. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Let's see if Ms. Puckett has the next one. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> next public hearing, 23A07, which is at 6200 and 6308 Holly Springs Road. Assistant Planning Director Katie Dry will introduce the hearing. Council will not take action on this item tonight, and it will be re will return at a future meeting. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The Shepherd's Church of Cary has petitioned for annexation of two parcels comprising of 2.578 acres located at 6200 and 6308 Holly Springs Road. The total annexation area is 3.846 acres, which includes 1.268 acres of intervening right-of-way within adjacent Holly Springs Road. The two parcels are located in Cary's extraterritorial jurisdiction and both contain existing single unit detached residential structures that will remain. The parcels were zoned to tr transitional residential conditional use with the rezoning cases 14 REZ11 and 17 REZ01. And both are in the Watershed Protection Overlay District, Swift Creek Subdistrict. The church is in the process of renovating both structures for future church-related uses. It would like to complete the renovations before connecting to public utilities. Therefore, following tonight's public hearing, council may defer action on the request to a future meeting when the structures are ready for utility connection. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Ms. Dry. So now's time for the public hearing for 23A07, and I'll call on the clerk for any written comments or registered speakers. No written comments and no registered speakers. If you're in the audience and you would like to speak at this public hearing, 23A07, which is at 6263-80 Holly Springs Road, I would invite you forward at this time. Anyone to speak at this public hearing? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. So just to clarify for those watching, they're building by right or making changes by right and they would like to come into the town at some point when they're ready. Yes, that's correct. Um, once construction is complete or the renovation on the existing structure is complete, they would like to connect to utilities and would need annexation to do so. Any comments by council before we move on? Jack, you look like you're well, in the Well, I, 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 um, I'm intrigued that it, the church owns this, or what, they own it, right? Well, my only appeal to them is you've got about 100 feet there of no sidewalk or no nothing, and it's like you bet your life, just like we're talking about at Trinity. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll help you here. But show a little mercy and maybe take care of that 100 feet. That's my only appeal, personal appeal. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Comment. Thank you, Ms. Dry. We'll move on to our fourth hearing which is 23A09 Maynard Properties on Lewis Stevens Drive. And once again, Katie Dry will introduce the hearing and council may take action on this item, Ms. Dry. 
So the owners of 31.765 acres of property located at 4945 5001 and 5025 Lewis Stevens Drive have petitioned for annexation. This property is located in Cary's extraterritorial jurisdiction and was zoned transitional residential conditional use in 2021. Ms. Dry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could we advance the slide? Oh, My thank you. No, no problem. Sorry. Thank you. The Associated Development Plan 23 DP 0433 Towns at Willow Park is currently under review and proposes a development plan with approximately 137 townhouses. Based on the provisions of the LDO, the development plan can be approved administratively when staff determines it meets applicable LDO requirements. The development under Cary's zoning regulations uh, must uh, requires annexation into Cary's corporate limits. And following tonight's public hearing, council may take action on the request. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dry. Now's the time for the public hearing for 23A09 Maynard Properties on Lewis Stevens Drive. And I'll call on the clerk for any written comments or registered speakers. No written comments and no registered speakers. If you're in the audience and would like to speak at this public hearing, now's the time. Anyone like to speak at this public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and open it up to council members for questions or comments or motions. Um, I'll make a motion to approve annexation petition 23A09. One second. There's a motion and a second discussion. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Dry. Oh, she's up for the next one, too. Our fifth public <laughs> hearing, 23A10, which is at 3150 Green Level West Road. Ms. Dry will introduce the hearing. Council may take action. Ms. Dry. Thank you. Uh, for this annexation, Duke Energy Progress LLC has petitioned for annexation of 37.30 acre, acres of property located at 3150 Green Level West Road and adjacent to Highway 540. This property is located in Cary's extraterritorial jurisdiction and is split zoned residential 8 conditional use and residential 40. It's also within the Watershed Protection Overlay District, Jordan Lake Subdistrict. The associated, associated Development Plan is currently under review, Title 23, DP 7452. It indicates the site will be developed with an electrical substation. Based on the provisions of the LDO, the development plan can be approved administratively when staff determines that it meets applicable LDO requirements. To develop under Cary's zoning regulations, the property must first be annexed into Cary's corporate limits. And following tonight's public hearing, council may take action on this request. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Dry. Now's the time for the public hearing for 23A10, which is at 3150 Green Level West Road. And I'll call on our clerk for any written comments or registered speakers. No written comments and no registered speakers. If you're in the audience and would like to speak at this public hearing, I would invite you forward at this time. Anyone to speak at this public hearing? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Open it up to council members for questions, comments, or a motion. I have a quick question. Um, we, since we won't see the development plan for this, right, it'll be done administratively, um, how close is this to the Greenway, the Bachelor Branch Greenway that's coming up beside it? Is, are they going to clear cut the entire thing so that all you, because I guess they need to for the substation? I don't remember seeing a substation before come before us. So that, that's correct. The, the substation would be approved through an administrative approval with a development plan. Um, the substation will have to adhere to all of Cary's buffer standards. So there is a 100-foot highway corridor buffer that runs along 540. We also have appropriate buffers to the north and to the west and to the south as well. So Cary's ensuring that all of those buffers are maintained with the site. OK. And is it close to the Greenway? Because I believe the Bachelor Ranch Greenway is in the other Duke rezoning. Ah, yes. That we're seeing. Um, so this particular substation is being is being sited um, kind of on the northern portion of this site. You can see the site kind of comes to a point. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be located above where the Duke Hill site is located. Right, but what will what will the users of our Greenway see? Will they see the substation, or will there be enough buffer? I'm just curious 
what I the impact speak of that is. I cannot to the visibility off the top of my head right now. Uh, I do know that a buffer will be maintained and required along that western property line, but can't speak officially to the, the, what that visibility would be. It would be great as we move forward to understand what those are and what the view shed will be for, especially if the greenway goes along that corridor. Yeah, we, we can I can't certainly. remember where, where exactly it is. We can certainly follow up with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or a motion? I'll make a motion to approve annexation petition 23A10. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Dry. Thank you. We now move to discussion items. Our first discussion item is the adoption of ordinance granting gas utility franchise. The business services manager, Brian Hayes, who's a first time presenter, welcome. First time, first time. <laughs> will present this item and council may take action. This item, will this item will appear before council at the following meeting to perform a second and following vote to adopt this ordinance. Mr. Hayes. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, I believe most of you know me from my business uh, services for the Cary community, but I uh, also work with uh, managing right-of-way issues as well. So uh, this is my first time uh, presenting, and so I'm excited for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, tonight's topic for your consideration is a proposed franchise agreement with PSNC, which is a subsidiary of Dominion Energy. A franchise agreement allows entities like PNC with uniform and streamlined processes to work with public right-of-way without going through the encroachment agreement process. Granting franchises also benefits care by reducing encroachment applications and providing staff clarity on how to work with franchise activities taking place in Cary right-of-way. PSNC previously had a franchise agreement with Cary, and I've been working with PSNC and Cary's legal department to update and finalize this agreement. Updates include changes to further protect Cary's infrastructure and to assist with communication between PSNC and Cary staff on future projects. Enhanced notification of when work would occur was the main focus of this update. As a result, PSNC is now required to provide a minimum two-week notification for any work that is either within a town thoroughfare work that exceeds the 24-hour period, and or work that would require traffic control measures. The initial term of this franchise agreement is for 20 years, after which the franchise shifts to year-to-year -year terms for the next 10 years for a total of 30 years. Staff recommends council vote to adopt the ordinance granting utility franchise. Next step, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute, Council must vote on this ordinance twice at separate, regular Town Council meetings. If this ordinance is approved tonight, it will come back before Council again at a subsequent meeting for a second vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. All right. So we vote on this twice. That's correct. Yes. That's, that's what's different. I don't think because we've ever done a, that before. No, it's because it's a franchise agreement, and they last a long time, so you rarely vote on those. Um, so this is the first time maybe um, maybe Jack has voted on one. I'm not sure. I was thinking Jack <laughs> might be the only one. I, I think it's been 30 years. years from now. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll they, lie to you and say I remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, they, they officially take two votes at two different council meetings. Okay, very good. Any questions or comments, or are we ready for a motion? I have, I have a question, as okay. usual. Um, I, I'm curious. So they're, they're, they're given the ability to work at our right-of-ways, right? That's correct. Does this mean that they can put infrastructure above ground, kind of in the middle of a sidewalk, if they wanted to? Uh, no, no. Typically, it's used for gas lines that they're putting underground. Um, and the reason why we, we stepped up this agreement to get more notification than the previous agreement, obviously, um, as I mentioned. But uh, the part of the reason for that is because there was work being done in our right-of-way that we weren't being notified on. Okay. And so um, in this agreement, we wanted to make sure to be notified and give approval to progress. Um, and now, I meant, I said progress, Dominion. Uh, if, if we don't give them approval within a two-week period, then it's a go-ahead for them to go ahead and 
Okay. Yeah. Understood. Other comments or questions? Question. Or a motion? Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> Good job. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? I think the only reason why there's hesitancy is that we don't fully understand the implications of this. Like the twenty. I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of get you know what it's about, and I understand that we've stepped up our standards a little bit, but I'm not really sure if there's like vulnerabilities <coughs> by having this blanket authority for them, and so forth. I mean, that, I think that's why we have this hesitancy. I don't think anybody wants to be the person who like, you know. It, their name is next to it going yeah just that's made exactly what I meant to say <laughs> well and uh, if, if this helps you feel better um, so it's time in this general area where a lot of cities are renewing their franchise agreements with PSNC um, we've made edits to ours that are stronger than other cities that we've looked at um, and so it's a standard document in the utility industry this is you know I'm this is good because we are updating this one. We have our, our agreement with Duke Progress is very old and still not up for renewal. Um, and so, you know, that's one that they can come in and, and work in the right of way and we have very little control over what they do. So this is a market improvement over that. Uh, we had an old franchise agreement with AT&T when they were a telephone company yeah. <laughs> from it's a long time ago. Bell South, I mean. Yes, this yeah. is, was with Bell South. Um, so this is a, a massive improvement, um, and again, because they are a utility regulated by the state, there is that another level of protection, um, so it's not like a random entity coming into the right-of-way. It's a utility that's highly regulated, um, and then this, again, just makes it easier for them to do their work and carry while at the same time making sure we know what they're doing, where they're doing it, and you know who to contact when they mess up, and who to go to when something needs to be fixed. So this is really a state-of-the-art franchise agreement. Um, at this point, you know, we, we worked and we pushed them hard to make changes to what they were presenting to us. Um, and so I really think we've got a good situation here um, and to continue that relationship and to be a good partner with the utilities. You know, we, we think it's a good situation. If I could add to that, I want to tie this back to previous council direction because, again, I think it's important that the people watching know a couple of years ago, um, we were being inundated with uh, work being done in our right-of-ways, which still continues, but without notification whether it was, I won't name the companies, but a lot of <laughs> big, we, we, big we, ones. We if you Google them, you could probably figure it out. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so council um, asked if there was something that we could do about that, and so we created Brian's position simply to be the liaison between the utility um, companies and our citizens. That was a council um, directive. And so this is really taking that one step further. It really enhances that communication link so we're able to um, meet the needs of our citizens because um, you know, our standards for communicating with them go beyond what the utility companies do. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware it, goes, it ties directly back to a larger effort by the, the council on behalf of our citizens. Thank you. You're welcome. You both have allayed my concerns. So thank right. you. <laughs> Other questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do. We have no other business with the council this evening. I declare this meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.